What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video we're going to be doing an overall market update, like always, talking about the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. We're going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I ended up doing today in terms of my trading on the 21st of May in 2019, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching, some that I see potential in here for the rest of this week and heading on to the rest of this month here in May of 2019. So before we do get into the topics of today's video, for everybody out there that watches these videos, you find value in these videos, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you're new to the channel and you enjoy the content that you do see here in a couple of minutes down the road, feel free to consider subscribing. I'm posting content day to day here doing market updates, trading updates, trading tips, videos on personal finance, investing, stuff like that. So if you're interested, hit that subscribe button, become a part of our community and let's get right into it guys. So the SPX, the S&P 500 index, the 500 largest publicly traded US companies ended up strong today guys, very strong, up $24.13 here, up 0.85% at the close of the markets. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 200 points today, about 197 points up 0.77% at the close of the market. And the NASDAQ, guys, pretty strong day here from that little, pretty big actually, red day that we saw yesterday. It was up today around 70 points, up about 0.96%, guys. So, Seems like the markets ended up really just erasing uh, the losses that we saw yesterday. And if you guys didn't see what ended up happening yesterday, we had a bit of a gap down and we pretty much, again, just recovered the losses, closing roughly where we ended up closing on, what, what was this, on Friday, right? On Friday afternoon on the S&P, we closed at about 28.60, ended up closing today at about 28.64 on the SPX. So let's just hop into some technicals here, see what is going on, see what I'm personally seeing, or rather talk about what I'm personally seeing here in the markets and kind of my mindset, where I'm viewing things right now are potentially going. Let's just get into it, guys. So on the 184-hour chart, we talked about yesterday the critical level that the S&P 500 was trading on, right? And that was the 180 simple moving average support here on the 184-hour our chart. We had those two pullback days, Thursday, Friday last week, pulled back again on Monday. Seems like we were maintaining this 180 SMA support at the close of the market at a higher low from the previous, meaning the uptrend was still intact. And this, is, and this was a critical spot because if we were to potentially break it today in terms of the support going below it, that could issue more selling. That could be a bearish sign in the overall markets, right? But if we were to hold above it, which we ended up doing today, and we bounced above it, that could really signify the continuation of this little uptrend reversal that we've had over these past couple of days. And as we can see, that is exactly what ended ended up happening, right? We held the 180 SMA support. We not only held it, but we bounced above it, uh, about 1% above it today with the nice green day that we had in the S&P 500. And hopping over here to the five day, actually, no, let's talk about the 20 day, one hour first. And this chart is kind of showing us how the S&P had a strong resistance actually at about 2860 today, roughly at about 28, actually no, let's say 2870. We noticed we went to 2870 roughly, went there again towards the end of the market here and again and we had three separate rejections at that point. And if we're looking on a longer term, or rather back to that 20 day, one hour chart, we're noticing this resistance is putting the S&P, actually, no, this is actually a way better chart to look at the 10 day, 30 minute. This little resistance at 2870 from the intraday chart is putting the S&P 500 at a lower high from the previous one from this past Friday. And it's also showing us 
There's a resistance under the 180 SMA here on the 10-day 30-minute chart. So this is actually um, a sign that the S&P could be gearing up for a pullback, right? So let's say tomorrow the futures are pointing down. Let's say the futures are negative 15 points tomorrow morning. That could potentially tell us as traders that, or us as people that are analyzing the market, that were really getting rejected by this 180 SMA here on the 10 day 30 minute. And we may be doing something like this. Follow my cursor here. We may be doing something like this where we're selling off and potentially looking to retest that 2835 to 2840 level where we were in yesterday's session. So this is really important. I know I preach about this in every single video, but it's important to keep an eye on multiple different time frames because if you're just looking at one time frame, you may not catch something like this, this little detail that we're seeing here on the S&P and it may alter your decisions and you may make a bad decision based on not doing enough technical analysis, right? So this is what the S&P is telling me. We had a good day today, but the smaller time frame trends are showing me that we're still in a little bit of a downtrend here. We're still at a lower high from the previous two that we saw on Thursday and Friday. And what I would need to see at this point for the S&P to break out of this trend it's pretty obvious. Well, it, it seems to me pretty obvious, but to you, you might you might not see it. But we might or we will need to see a break out of this 180 SMA resistance, right? We would need to see a break out, potentially test back up into the 2870s, 2880s. At that point, we'd be testing this resistance from Friday, and if we break that level, that could be a very good sign that the markets want to keep pushing up and maybe get back into the $2,900 level. Level on the SPX. These are some things that I'm personally watching. So that's kind of the rundown here on the S&P 500. Large, largely um, on a large scale here, it seems like we are holding above the 180 SMA. It seems like the uptrend is continuing on a long, uh, on a large scale basis here. But going into those smaller time frames, we kind of get to see what's been going on over the past couple of days, which is showing us maybe we're maybe we're at a point here where the S and P might be selling off a bit more. And again, super important to look at a bunch of different time frames. So the Dow Jones Industrial Average, this one's actually breaking out a bit on the 10 day, 30 minute. We notice on the SPX the resistance here. This one's breaking out. We noticed this past Thursday and Friday, same exact thing with the S&P, right? The, these two days on the Dow, they were under the 180 SMA with the 180 SMA acting as a resistance. That's no really, you can't really doubt that by looking at this chart. And we're noticing now we struggled a bit this morning to get out of that resistance here on the 10 day, 30 minute. But towards the end of the day, we ended up breaking out of that resistance. But if we're looking on a longer term basis here on the Dow Jones industrial average, we're actually still trending below the 180 SMA, this little yellow line on the 184 hour chart. So ideally here for the Dow to continue this little uptrend push that we've been on over the past couple of days here of higher highs, higher lows, we need to break out of the 180 SMA resistance and ultimately the $25,900 to $26,000 level of resistance that we struggled to get above on Thursday and Friday of last week as we can clearly see on these two days of trading, right? Strong resistance sold off and now it seems like we want to test those levels again so for the Dow really to just continue this uptrend that we've been on over the past couple of days we need to see it break into $26,000 at that point it would be trending above the 180 SMA and would be getting closer and closer to the next level of resistance at that point which is at about $26,000 $200 on the Dow Jones. And on the one day, one minute, you guys can see here, you know, unlike the SPX where it had a bit of a resistance at a level, the Dow was pretty much breaking uh, 
you know, uh, the uh, intraday highs throughout the entire day, right? We noticed the beautiful uptrend all day, breaking highs, breaking highs, higher lows, higher highs, all of that different stuff. So if we're going over here to the NASDAQ very quickly, slash NQ, we're noticing a bit of the same. On the 184-hour chart here, we're noticing that we're holding above 73.50 as a support. We're trending below the 50 simple moving average right now at a potential lower high from the previous, which would be uh, really the continuation of a descending pattern in the NQ if we were to get rejected by this 50 SMA and maybe start trending back down into the $7,300 level. That's what I'm personally seeing right now. We're trending below or between rather 73 335, 7350, and about 7520, roughly a 200 point level in the NQ here. Hopping over here to the 20 day, one hour, we're noticing that this one is still in a descending, downtrending pattern here with the moving averages still acting as resistances. We almost broke out of it here on the 16th of May, but then we had that big red day yesterday. I know you guys recall it was about a 1.5% red day. We still ended up holding a little bit of a uh, higher low here, right? But with the sell-off that we saw yesterday, although we were at a higher low, it's still holding us below these resistance levels, guys, right? These resistance levels that we're seeing here, the 50 and the 180 SMAs. And we're also noticing a bearish cross of the 50 SMA below the 180 SMA slowly starting to form here, which is kind of raising some red flags to me for a potential sell-off. But let's say tomorrow we don't end up getting rejected here, which would issue more selling off in my personal opinion. Let's say we end up Breaking through here, we notice the futures are green in the morning. We end up breaking up here and maybe retesting, let's say, 7500 slowly climbing into the low to mid $7,500 level. That can issue the real, really the continuation of the uptrend here. And at that point, we should be breaking some longer-term barriers here, longer-term resistances like that. 50 SMA that we talked about a couple of minutes ago here on the NQ. And if we're going here to the five day, five minute, we're noticing we sold off and now we're seeing a bit of a bullish, uh, you know, cross on the five day, five minute for the NASDAQ. And that's just honestly what I'm seeing right now, guys. The sell-off, we saw that again yesterday, the big sell-off. And from there, we've been recovering pretty nicely over the past 24 to 36 hours, I would say, in the NQ. So are the markets going to continue to recover here? Are they going to continue to push up? There's a bunch of resistance barriers that we need to break out of that we covered in the NQ, the Dow, and the S&P. And if we do break these levels, guys, and we start to see some more stability, you know, this could be what we need to see for the recovery. But still, remember that we're still in the midst of a bunch of drama out there in terms of the economy with other countries, you know, Iran, the trade war that's going on, right? You know, the, the, the elections are coming up here. I know that that's not, that doesn't have much effect on the markets, you know, right now as it will in a couple of months. But these are some things that could really just fluctuate the markets up, down, continue to have, or really just continue for them to be volatile due to all these different things going on with the economy, all the stuff that I just mentioned. So just be, uh, just be cautious about that, or really just be mindful about that, right? Understand all these different things and understand the time period that we are currently in in, in, in the market. It's just kind of a difficult time right now. Uh, you know, pretty much it's been much more difficult now to trade, in my opinion, and to spot trends than it was over the past couple of months. But that's not uh, really news to us, guys. We know that over the past couple of weeks, the markets have been extremely, extremely, uh, you know, volatile. Right, so let's just talk about a trading update very quickly. And quite honestly, guys, 
there is no trading update video for today because I didn't make any trades, right? I, I, I try to be, or I am all the time transparent with you guys about my trades. I tell you when I take a trade, when I take a loss, when I'm in the green, stuff like that. You all know that by now. And I also tell you days when I don't trade whatsoever. And today was one of those days, guys. To be honest, I wasn't at my computer really not much at all today, to be honest, right? I had a lot of errands, outdoor stuff that I was doing, outdoor work, stuff like that. And I wasn't really able to hop in any trades today. But sometimes, guys, like I say a bunch on this channel, the best trade out there to make is no trade at all. So again, no, no trades for me, guys, but that doesn't mean that I'm not doing my analysis, looking at stocks, planning for the rest of the week, and planning for the rest of the month, quite honestly, guys, because of course I'm still doing that, but I just didn't see any opportunities out there in the market for me out of the ones that I was watching in my watch list. There just wasn't much movement, and I'm a firm believer of not forcing opportunities, right? Let the opportunities come to you, and when those opportunities come to you, take take action on them, take full advantage, and I just didn't see any opportunities today, guys, to be completely honest, raw, and transparent with all of you guys out there. That's just the truth. So let's talk about, now that I got that out of the way, let's talk about some stocks that I am watching and some stocks that a bunch of people in our community and the stock market community, either on YouTube, you know, just a bunch of other communities out there are talking about now. So the first one that's on my phone here that I do want to talk about is 3M, ticker symbol MMM. And this is a stock, guys, that's gotten absolutely clobbered over these past couple of weeks. If you think about a stock that's gotten hammered, Think about 3M and understand that this one's probably gotten hammered more than the one that you're thinking about, right? 3M is literally down, like, I think it's 25 to 30% from its peak of 220, which was about literally a month ago. 220 on the uh, 23rd of April in 2019. Yes, that was about a month ago. And just notice this. This is a pattern that I like to call, and I didn't obviously make up this phrase. This is a phrase that stems years and years and years ago, a falling knife. A falling knife is pretty much a stock that continues to fall day in, day out, no bottom in sight. It's just literally falling. It's like a falling knife. Just think about if you hold the knife, in the air and let go. What's it going to do? It's going to go straight down. And that's the whole, um, this is really the whole pattern that I'm seeing here on 3M. Take a look. This is literally a falling knife from here. And then it's just been pretty rapidly going down from there in falling knife style. And now we're approaching levels that haven't been touched in years here on 3M, guys. If we're looking on the three-year one week, we're actually getting to levels that the stock was at in the year of 2016. The level we are at right now is roughly at the support of, of about $163 to $164, which again, we were at this level in the October month of 2016. And if we're going over here to the 20-year one month chart, this is not the 20-year one month chart. This is the 20 uh, year one month chart take a look if we end up holding this level right here which has been again a support from back in 2016 and also back in 2015 2014 it was an older resistance which became a new support when we broke above it if we hold these levels here guys right this can be a pretty good opportunity for a reversal on 3m but let's say we break 165, 166, which could potentially happen, guys, because right now the market's attitude towards 3M, there's a lot of selling pressure here. It seems like it's just going down, 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 down. So it might not abide by these technicals that we are seeing here. So let's see if it did break that level to the downside. Where could we be going next? From there, you know, if we're looking at this chart, 
Some other spots we might see are $160. That could be the next spot, right? $160, that was a resistance back in the beginning of November in 2015. Again, we broke out of it, making it a support. That could be the next level. From there, we may be going down to as far as $138 to $140 per share, which was a support. It was a support back in 2014, 2015, roughly in the August to September month. So at this point, if we were to end up holding the 160 level and we saw a clear cut reversal on the 184 hour chart of us breaking out of the EMA and out of the 50 SMA uh, resistances here, you know, that would be a pretty good reversal sign to the upside for 3M. That could be a potential swing trade, in my personal opinion, if we were to see those technical breaks. And from there, you know, the next resistance would be probably 178. Upwards from there would be roughly at about $183, and the list goes on, right? From there, we might be going up to $196. But before we do talk about these $180 levels, guys, we need to break out of these levels first, the 170s, the 175s, 180s, and then we can start talking about these higher levels. Until we break and really just maintain the 160s, you know, this is still a falling knife, downtrending stock, but I do think there's a lot of potential in it once and if it does end up reversing. And for those of you guys that don't know, 3M is a very long-lasting company, been here a while. You know, a lot of people invest in this one for dividends. So this one could end up bouncing back here in a couple of weeks, months. I personally think it will eventually, and I'm just waiting here patiently on when it does, when we see that technical break, that could end up being a nice move on 3M. So another one I want to talk about today is Cron, ticker symbol C-R-O-N, mostly for this little action that I'm seeing here on a smaller time frame basis. We're noticing a bit of a bullish reversal here on Cron. We're noticing we're no longer trending below moving averages, uh, resistances here, the 50 and the 180 SMAs. We've been making some Higher highs, higher lows, reversal uptrend pattern here from the $13.90 level, the $14 level. Now we're in the $15 level, and now we're trending above the 180 SMA and the 50 SMA. I think this could be the start of a reversal to the upside on Cron, especially if we see a bullish cross on the 20-day, one-hour chart. And judging on the 184-hour chart again, I understand that it's still descending right now. It's still potentially... At at a lower high from the previous so ideally here I would like to see a firm break above 1575 which was an old support now a resistance if we break out of there this one could be forming some sort of a cup pattern where it might be testing the 180 SMA after the potential break of 1570 to 1580 right so if we break into the $16 level on Cron guys I think that would be a or that would be a very bullish upside move on Cron ticker symbol C R O N. So another one I want to talk about is B R K. Uh, here it is, Berkshire Hathaway, guys. So Berkshire Hathaway is a stock that I pretty much have never talked about on this channel, nor do I know a lot about the stock. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't know much about this company. I know a decent amount, but I don't know enough to hop into it as a long-term investment. Let's just leave it at that. But on a technical basis here, we're seeing quite a big of a pullback, or quite a bit, rather, should I say, a pullback on BRB, right? Or a BRK slash B, rather. And that pullback is of about 7 and we're noticing over the past couple of days, actually, if we're looking on the five day, five minute, really just the past two days, or I guess you could say the past couple of days, there's been strong support roughly at about 200 to $205 on Berkshire Hathaway. We see the bottom out here at 201, bottom out at about 202. And now we're seeing a bit of a bullish push above moving average resistances here on the five day, five minute. And we're also maintaining these levels as support levels heading into the market close. So this is a pretty good sign on a smaller term basis that Berkshire Hathaway is potentially finding a bottom here, right? On the 20-day, one-hour chart, 
We're noticing, despite finding potentially a bottom, we're noticing that the stock is still downtrending below the 50 SMA resistance. So ideally here, I would love to see this one climb up to the 205s, the 206 levels, and slowly start to break these levels that I'm about to draw out for you guys. So 205 would be a level I would love to see it break, and 206. If we break those levels, we'll be way above the 50 SMA, and we'll be breaking out of resistance after resistance. And ultimately, I would love for it to break the 180 SMA again. And at that point, you know, that would be a full-on reversal confirmation to the upside. And we can capture that 5-6% margin that would be left on Berkshire Hathaway, guys. But overall, I am liking it. We're seeing it's, again, not fully reversed yet on the smaller term charts, but we are noticing if it does reverse here, which I think it person, I personally think it can, that would be a higher low from the previous. The uptrend would be intact, and that would just be, honestly, us riding the continuation of the uptrend here. But we need to see quite a bit of uh, confirmations here to the upside for Berkshire to be at the place where I would personally trade it or swing trade it, but I definitely think this one, along with 3M, provides some value there for stocks that have fallen drastically over the past couple of weeks. Obviously, Berkshire hasn't fallen as dr as drastically as 3M, but it's kind of in the same scenario where it's fallen and there's a lot of margin of profit there that we could potentially capitalize on if we see that reversal. So another one I want to talk about today is UGAS, guys. Ticker symbol UG. A Z and you guys is a natural gas based ETF. It trades on slash NG and slash NG guys. The natural gas futures, whenever this future is going up in price, you gas is going up in price as well. So this is kind of easy to break down here. Let me take out my trend line and draw out what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing here a pullback from natural gas from 270 down to about 260 to 261, where it's holding a higher low from the previous and where the uptrend is still intact. What had, what this has done is it opened up roughly a 3% margin of profit on natural gas. And since UGAS, which is the ETF that I'm personally watching... Since UGAS is a 3x leveraged ETF, that means it has about 9% margin of profit open because let's say natural gas drops 3%. You guys is dropping around 9%, right? Which is why from 27.75 down to where we've pulled back today, there's about a 9% margin of profit open. So I'm really liking this one heading into tomorrow, especially since, again, we're holding the uptrend. We're seeing a lot of margin of profit open. But now what I would want to see, guys, to be honest, is for us to really start trucking back up into the high 25s, maybe even the $26 level before taking taking a position because what that's going to tell me is that we're confirming the uptrend or the continuation of the uptrend and that we're not being faked out here, right? The worst thing would be for us to get in prematurely right here and then all of a sudden it reverses to the downside, right? We want to make sure we want to confirm that it's pushing up and at that level, we would need to see a 27 or 25.75 level, 25.90 level on you gas, maybe $26 and on natural gas, we need to see a pretty much a break up into, let's say, the 263 level, ultimately a break out of the 180 SMA resistance here for the continuation. And if that ends up happening, you guys tomorrow would probably be the best play out of the ones that I talked about in this video. And it's honestly the number one ETF that I'm personally watching for tomorrow, guys. So, that's pretty much it, guys. You know, 3M, I'm watching very closely, right? You know, a bunch of these com uh, the these futures and these ETF combos, you know, natural gas, I'm watching crude oil as always. You know, the, the performance of crude oil today wasn't that crazy, down about 16 cents, down about 0.25%, right? I'm, I'm watching, you know, Berkshire Hathaway, 
you know, Kron. Of course, Tesla on a potential reversal here to the upside, which I'm personally not seeing until we break out of these simple moving average resistances here on the 20-day, one-hour chart. Another one that I'm watching is JNUG. Gold has been pretty much consolidating around the 1270 level here for the past couple of trading days. The GDX is looking like it wants to potentially reverse here to the upside. If we break $21 on GDX, that would be a huge bullish move, and that would indicate a huge bullish move in store for JNUG. And if we're looking at JNUG, which is the 3X leverage ETF we trade on this channel, JNUG has been holding 660, 670, 680, this, this general level of support here for a couple of days. All we need to see now is a break into the $7 level, I think. And from there, that could be a huge breakout play on JNUG. There's a bunch of things that I'm personally watching here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Smash that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. And feel free to comment. Let me know how you guys ended up doing today. What are your thoughts on the market? I would love to know. Follow me on Instagram down below, the Strive Smart Discord, Strive Smart Facebook, my personal Instagram, the Strive Smart Instagram. Everything is linked down below. So if you guys want to be further connected with me and the community, that's where you can do it. So I uh, thank you guys all. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Again, I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.